Welcome, welcome! It's Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And as you can see, we are going to take another look at the Origin M50. If you remember in my last video that I attempted to look at some of the reworked ships of 3.10, I could not get off the landing pad at a Port Olisar. Not exactly sure what was going on there. I know a lot of you left comments down below that you did not have the same issue whatsoever. When I did take off, I would spin out of control like I had thruster issues. Um, let's see if things are a little different here on Lorville. Uh, this is the PTU patch, so it's patch D on the, the PTU. Uh, so it's not the regular Persistent Universe, which is what I tested my original M50 rework at. Uh, so keep that in mind. They could have gone in and done a rework of some kind on the thrusters, or maybe it was just me being unlucky. I, I don't know. Uh, but it seems to be just fine taking off from Lorville, like many of you had said, uh, for, your, for your M50s, you didn't experience any issues. Uh, so it was quite smooth sailing. It actually flew pretty well. I really enjoyed the way that it flew. Um, Honestly, I think I like the way it flies more than the car 2 all which I will show you a, another video on the car 2 all tomorrow. Uh, but I wanted to get this M50 video out first to show you that mine is working, at least on the PTU. And how does it fare in combat? Did not really get a chance to test the combat side out. It's not necessarily dedicated to combat. It's more of a racing ship. It looks pretty, it goes fast, it's highly maneuverable, but it does get used as an interceptor from time to time in the advocacy. So it's made to go out and intercept ships, whether they're bad guys or good guys or whatever. They're, you know, It's super fast, so it's really good at that role of going out, getting in front of them or pulling up next to them and maybe have them pull over so that they can be scanned, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, then they call in the troops if you know, combat ensues because you're probably not going to want to fight too much in a little bitty racing ship like this one. I will show you, however, in this video that it is still a capable fighter. Uh, I really enjoyed using it. The high maneuverability makes a big difference on a ship like this. Uh, you know, you could have, uh, you know, Aurora... Certain Auroras have more guns than this. I think the MR has more guns or the LN... Uh, they, they both have more guns, definitely more missiles, than the M50. But the M50 has such better maneuverability that it does make a huge difference in combat. Uh, first thing up I have is a Mustang Delta, which I think that's all I'm facing really in these few missions that I took around Hurston. And you can see I'm using two Badger repeaters. Those are size 2 repeaters. You can use sized 1 guns gimbaled. That's the default. Well, the default actually are M4As now, I believe, uh, which are size 2 cannons. Uh, but I decided to go with the Badgers just to see, you know, I like doing repeaters. Not necessarily the best loadout for this ship because, uh, you know, you, you're going to have to have your ship on target a lot. Whereas with the cannons, you can get away with shot, then move, shot, then move. You don't have to always be pointed at the target. With the repeaters, you're going to need to be pointed at the target a lot in order to get those hits. Uh, so, is it the best loadout on an M50? I, I don't know. I haven't tried everything. Uh, that's not what this video is about. But you can see I was able to take down a Mustang Delta rather rather quickly. The Deltas, I'm sorry, those are the red-headed stepchildren of Star Citizen. They were supposed to be really good fighters or light fighters uh, with this crazy cool armor these neat rocket pods uh, the rockets suck the armor is not that great the ship's just not that great and maybe I will do another video with the Mustang Delta flying one but right now at least going against them it's it's like cutting through paper man they're just not that strong um, so, I, yeah, I think the Mustang Delta probably needs to be revisited on the balance side. Uh, but you could probably say that on a lot of different ships. Uh, 
So here we go off to the next mission that I picked up. I just picked up a bunch of different ones, some bounty hunter type missions, uh, that sort of thing. And we're in this little asteroid field. So this is going to be a real test as far as the maneuverability of the M50. You have to be careful that you're not sliding into one of these asteroids as you are strafing left or right. I always use some sort of strafe in combat. Now, a lot of people will also decouple to where they don't have any flight assist whatsoever. I don't do that very often, at least not in 310. Uh, you know, I used to do that a lot way back in the like 1.8 era, uh, way back then, because I had precise control over my decoupled flying. Now, there are some people out there that still do decoupled a lot, and they still have pretty good control, but they do it so much that uh, they've had a lot of practice doing it. In this little asteroid field, definitely not the place that I want to decouple. Uh, I want to be able to uh, try to avoid the asteroids as I'm dogfighting with another Mustang Delta. And once again, I'm able to bring the Mustang Delta down. Uh, with two Badger repeaters, those are just size twos. It dispatches them relatively quickly. I mean, they're not going to be as quick as like a size 5 hammering the thing. But, you know, I didn't even get hit. So, I'm quite impressed with this little M50 in a combat role. Uh, obviously, you're probably not going to want to take on big, big ships. But then again, you can outmaneuver them. Uh, you, you'll see in tomorrow's video with the Cartuao how I'm able to outmaneuver Constellation Andromedas. Uh, with no problem. I mean, obviously the Andromeda is a bus, uh, but uh, they're even firing, you know, their turrets and stuff at me, and I was able to quite easily avoid uh, a lot of those shots. Uh, so yeah, this M50, I really like it. I I'm glad that I just did another video on it. I'm glad that I took it out for a spin from another location other than Port Olisar and on the PTU, because. I, of course, would not have had this experience if I didn't. Uh, I, I Like I said, the maneuverability of this thing is fantastic. Uh, I have not done any more atmospheric flight with it as of yet. Uh, maybe I will do that in another future video and kind of compare the atmospheric flights between different ships. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in a video like that. Uh, we could do something along those lines. Uh, I certainly do appreciate everybody that has been tuning into my videos. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. I do have some good news coming up towards the end of the month. Uh, a little weight off my shoulders, but I do have to get through this month still. So uh, we are doing our best to work, uh, you know, take care of my grandmother, uh, make sure my wife has everything she needs, and uh, be able to get some of these videos out on a regular basis. So here we are. I'm trying to do uh, an elimination mission where I have an authorized execution warrant and it is on Hurston, so you know you're going to go to a bunker. A uh, little bit of an interesting tip, guys. Hurston is still bugged when you try to quantum around the planet. And you're going to see what happens when you foolishly choose to try to quantum straight to your target around the planet. This was a bug back, uh, I guess, a, it's been a 3.7, 3.6, something like that, where every time you tried to quantum around the planet, you went into the planet. Now you can see, this looks like it's just on the edge. I'm thinking, okay, I mean, Hurston's a big planet. That's not really that far. I, I'm, It's on this side. I'm not having to go around. Well, watch what happens and see. Funny I use the word see because that's where I just ended up, in the sea. So guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much to all my Patreons and YouTube members. I told you I needed to give you a shout out. Here it is. I thank you so much. You guys are super awesome. I, I can't say thank you enough. Definitely make sure you check out all the information for my org and all my information for Patreon and YouTube are down below. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy. I'll see you out in the verse.